Hey, welcome to Ancestry Genealogy 101. This is Bob. I work at the Gaines Branch. I am at a remote location and my internet is not great, so I have open tabs ready for me to show you what you can do with Ancestry.com. So, as of today and through the end of this month, or maybe April, I can't remember now what they said, um, you can access Ancestry.com from your home computers. Or devices which is great because we are of course are closed um, so in order to access those records um, what you'll need to do is to log in through our site um, and then go to ancestry there so kdl.org and then you're going to go to the online research and databases off here on the side um, and then if you scroll up there's the ancestry I'm not going to click on it because I have a slow internet right now so it's just going to take too long when you click on it, it's going to ask for your library card number, um, just like when you sign in at the branch. And this is what it's going to come up to. So this is the main screen. Um, Ancestry has gazillions of records, see billions of records, it says there on the front. They have quick links um, here too. The worst thing you can do if you have no experience searching or don't know very much about your family is to click on begin searching, um, this one right here. Uh, that will get you so many records that you will instantly not, you'll be so overwhelmed. It's just, it's overwhelming even if you know what information enough to put in it because you're not finding things that you're looking for. Um, you're much better to go into one of the quick links down here at the bottom or um, into the census records. So the U.S. census records, uh, ironically, because we are doing the census records, census this year, the 2020 census, um, are some of my favorite records. Um, and as you can see here, it's um, 1790 through 1940. Um, so 1790 was the first one. 1940 was the last one that's been released. We have two more years before the 1950. Um, this is a great place to start if you don't have a lot of dates, um, birthdays, death dates, marriage dates for your family. Um, so, for example, go to your grandparents. Um, what was their birth year? go to the census that they would first appear on. So like 1920, 1930, those are usually there and search for your grandparents and find them with their parents. Even if you know their parents' name, you're still gonna get additional information. There'll be siblings, there'll be information about where they live, um, renting, um, but you'll also get ages and occupations um, and that type of thing you can hang on to and help you work farther back and help you locate additional records. But you need to have some dates, some idea where they lived before you can even do any of the other searches. So U.S. Census records are an awesome thing. I'm just going to click over to a new tab to show you. Um, so here are the census records. And that's all in here. Um, the 1890 um, is a fragmented one. That's because a lot of it was damaged um, and it's pretty much gone, so you cannot count on the 1890 census. But what you can do, there's an 1890 veterans schedules, and states actually do them during the five years between. So you may be able to find a state census um, that may help you kind of break through that 1890 missing census. But all you're going to do, and you can search the entire census record, you're going to type in the first name. Um, I'm just going to type in Scott and Smith. All right, and we're gonna say he was born in 1900 in New York. And so when I start to type New York, it pulls up the information and you just click on it. All right, and then I'm just gonna do search. This may take a minute and it may not pull up because of my Wi-Fi issues, but um, that will give me a list of records. I can kind of see where I, you know, if I know where he lived or if I know his parents' name, I can locate it through that as well using this simple basic search. Um, so, yep, that's going to take a bit. So, uh, going back to the main screen, um, you can use your back arrows. You the, have the uh, new collections over here on the side. Um, that is a great way to find out what Ancestry actually has available because you don't aren't going to find records there that they don't have. Um, that's why the beginning search is a bad thing to do at the first time you do it. Um, so card catalog, um, if you click on new collections, this will take you to the card catalog. Um, and as you can see here, this is a list of all their records. Um, it's This one is sorted by date updated, and you can just scroll and scroll and scroll. There's thousands and 
thousands of records. You can also filter by collections. Um, and that way, um, so you're looking to see if they have like a New York death record for like 1950. You could go right into the records on the side there and see if that actually is an available record. There are still a lot of um, laws in place, especially for birth records. Um, usually you can't find a birth record unless it's been 100 years. Um, since they birthed. So those are actually harder to find, but usually you can find a death record um, or birth or marriage record. So um, you can use, again, that new collections over here on the side, right there. And then this will bring you to this card catalog. All right. Um, so not to make it too complicated, we're just gonna go back here quick a minute. So you can use the quick links down here on the side. They actually have a ton of things you can explore. And they also have searches along the top, um, the charts and forms. I would spend some time just kind of searching through it, get comfortable with the interface. You can do advanced searches. So like this one that, let's see, if it'll let me go now. Oh, re zero. Um, that's okay, because I can go here. You see how I can make this very broad. I can make Scott more, um, more exact because I like especially if you have a unique first name you can make that extra uh, a strong search um, but obviously I don't actually know that someone would be born I figure with Smith we might be pretty good here let's do the opposite let's make Smith very broad and then exact and Scott no nope, it's still not gonna work for me all right so then I can do edit search and oh I put 1990 that's why 19 is what I meant Oop. that's the other thing it's really easy to like mix up your dates like 18 to yeah it's it's something that happens so all right so here we go so we got some Smiths in here um, 1920 United States Federal Census and this is Mississippi so you can actually see down here kind of get some general information um, you can click right on the view image or if you click on the little title that's highlighted it'll bring you to a kind of a a breakdown of that image so that you can just click on that and you kind of can see the names here so if none of those names are familiar or don't match anything in your family that you know of then you can just go back to all results and go to the next one all right so the 1910 census here is the stan s i can view the actual census just click on your view button here and then you're actually getting a it's a scanned image of the actual census all the handwritings on there you can see what was written with if anything had been changed it's from home that's the best image you're going to get are these beautifully scanned images that you can actually you can read them fairly well there are definitely um, issues with handwriting and the way things were spelled is not always going to be standard so you do have to be a little careful for that and ancestry does highlight the set that you are looking for um, so I'm just going to zoom in maybe if it'll let me like this. So this one, that's actually very light. Um, if you can see in that print, uh, like I can see New York in there, um, but it is it is actually very faint. So you're going to have to be very careful um, when you read that. Um, it's not letting me zoom in a lot. So, um, so finally, just to wrap this up, I just wanted to let you know that this is this is the reality records online are just the very very tip of the iceberg there are thousands of records that are have been scanned by the family history library that are just available on microfilm and then there are billions of records that are just not available and you can access records from all over the world um, and do all that so part of the problem with finding that information is you you don't want to just do a google search and not find anything um, if you go to familysearch.org, you can create a free account. Family Search is the um, Latter-day Saints um, site. They have free records all the time, so you can use this anytime where you are. Um, you just make a free account. But they do have this wiki that you can use um, that actually has great information. So you can browse by state. So let me just go to um, Europe a second. If I click on the Europe, it's going to bring it up so I can browse by country. I can find out what type of records available, websites, um, and just a lot of different information. Um, let's do Guernsey. It's not going 
going too slow, a little slow. Um, but that way you can tell, um, and it's not necessarily on their site, but they'll give you lots of different information. So they have civil registrations. Um, if you look at the states, they tell you when the records were started to be recorded. Um, so this is just a great resource as well. Um, and that's on the familysearch.org. Um, and then it, there's a little three lines that you click on and you can go to wiki, but you can also search records here as well. So um, make sure to take advantage of this time um, when you have maybe a few extra minutes to maybe start working on your researching your family tree. Another great thing you could do is interviews. Um, if you have kids, you could have your children interview your parents, uh, record that, and you would have that um, really special memory for when they're older after your parents have gone. I have a, a clip of my grandma being interviewed by one of my nieces. It is, it's beautiful. I just, you know, it really just brings her back to me right away. So uh, that's a great time to do this. Just, you can Google um, genealogy questions and they can give you a whole list of things. The only caveat you do not want to give is give them yes or no answers. So make sure your question makes them say more than yes or no. So, you know, be elaborate, but you can definitely do a little research. Um, you could also, as the parent, you could prompt things like, oh, ask your grandparents about the time that they went fishing and blah, blah, blah. Um, and that works really good too, to prompt memories that you want your child to hear from your parents. Um, so hopefully this will keep you occupied for a while. Um, it really is <laughs> time consuming. And it's a lot of great fun, too. So um, it's very addicting. Um, but good luck. And thank you for watching.